Hey y'all, welcome back. I want to apologize about my voice. That's why I kind of been MIA from YouTube because I just woke up randomly one day, girl, and my voice was gone. I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of digging it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the hose is eating it up. You know, I ain't really mad at it too much. But yeah, girl, as soon as I started to film this voiceover, it's like the voice was gone. But to be honest with you, I feel like it happened for a reason. Because initially this video was supposed to be about me becoming a woman of my dreams and things like that. But like a couple of days ago, I had a little tower moment or whatever. And I get on my spam page, I'm on live and I'm like tears, like I'm a mess, right? And this innocent, poor innocent girl comments, hey babe, have you tried shadow work? And this shit just, I, it just pissed me off. I was so mad. I was like, girl blocked get out of here like be be for real right now like I'm really upset right and I feel so bad because I just want to thank that girl for actually like revealing that because it actually showed me two things number one a lot of people don't know what shadow work is it just became like one of those words like that people just kind of throw it around like it became just very mainstream and like people don't really know the meaning behind it and secondly it reminded me to be patient with my journey and everybody's journey around me because what's simple to me could be complex to somebody else and what's complex to me could be simple to someone else. So just not to undermine where other people are in their journey and like how they process things. I wanted to explain to you guys what shadow work actually is. Um, just the way I feel about it because like I said, it has gone mainstream and it, you know, a lot of things in spirituality go mainstream like sage and crystals and, you know, shadow work journals and things like that. But these things don't actually have power unless you give it power. Just look at how many people go to church every weekend and say, I the way they act. Amen. Amen. I think that there's a huge misconception around shadow work. But a lot of people feel like shadow work is just this you know, I don't know, traumatic life event that you just, you know, it's just tears and just dramatics and just all of these things. And, and it's not that it's really just a journey, you know, but it's a journey and it's a test of like blind faith, you know, and it's having faith in yourself and in, and in God and in the universe and things like that, because there's been dark, dark times, right? If you think about shadow work, shadows, darkness, right? You've been in dark periods of your life where, you know, the only person you could trust or rely on was you, you know, and God. And I feel like a lot of us have been through moments like that. So uh, everybody has pretty much done some form of shadow work before. It's just got a fancy name now. So I'm gonna break it down for you like how I see it. We here in the cut with my twin, we be vibing. You know, with the universe, chilling, minding our own business, dating, making friends, you know, uh, you know, building relationships, you know, maintaining friendships, all these other things. Right. And, you know, that saying like ignorance is bliss. It, it really is because you, what you don't know, you know what I'm saying? It, it can't hurt you. You feel like, you know, <laughs> so, but but when you but when you F around and you find out and the thing is, I, I, we don't even be effing around. We just be chilling, minding our business. Boom. Catch a straight from the universe. Now you triggered. Somebody said something you don't like. Somebody did something you don't like. And you like, wow, how could you do this to me? Triggers really, I feel like, attack your ego or they hurt your feelings. Or maybe even both. You might get a, a, a you might get two piece by the universe. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like our first initial reaction to being triggered is to be emotional and to be reactive. And also to place ourselves in like this victim role where but victims have no power. They just sit and let other people control their emotions and their feelings. And doing that can leave you in a real stagnant state of energy because you're just waiting. And you don't even know what you're waiting on because you don't even know if this person tells you what you're waiting. Sorry, you know, oh, please, I'm, I didn't mean it, you know, whatever. If this person clears this up, you know, in the way that you think it might clear it up, it might mess around and make it worse. It might not do anything. So it's just best not to wait on other people to fix you or to heal you because, number one, you're not damaged, okay? We, there's a version of ourselves that exists that we got, like, reprogrammed when we got raised. Like, there's this a system that we had to follow, this Think people told us who we were and who we were supposed to be and things like that. And this is all just a part of overriding that system. And if you're waiting on someone to come 
say sorry or to try to fix you or heal you come in with a with a cape and do all of that other stuff to make you feel better because you feel like you're owed something or you feel like you're entitled to this and you know x y and z regardless of what was done or what was said right you're you could be waiting forever you got to stop for a second and realize that like the people that God used to trigger you also have their own journey they also have their own triggers they also have shadows and sometimes they have to access those to even be able to be held accountable to even come to you and see things people can only people can only comprehend things based on their perception some of these demons that these people dealing with they run hell they got sections bottle service bottle girls they down there turning that shit up okay who going up against them <laughs> you know what i'm saying i can't even blame you babes you know what i'm saying because you <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And you actually really never know what anybody's going through. I digress. Back to the topic. We vibing. We chilling. You shining your light and you minding your business. Boom, you're triggered. Now there's this big, fat ass, heavy ass, thick boulder that's just literally blocking your light. You, you can't shine your light no more. It's this big old boulder. And it's too wide to walk around it. You can't go over it. It's too tall. You can't, you can't. You can't maneuver around this. And it's just, it's, it's blocking everything. So you look around, you're like, dang, stuff starting to look a little strange. Like, this not really how I'm used to feeling, how I'm, how I'm used to seeing stuff. Like, you know, I'm used to having my light on and, and now it's being blocked by this boulder. But, but you look around and you see that there's a shovel provided by the one and only, you know, because everything that you need is inside of you. And uh, it's your option, decision to pick up that shovel and there's no way around this boulder. You literally just have to go through it. And that is shadow work. When you decide to go through that boulder. So everybody has this option. Some people, they're scared. Some people, boulders are the size of God. You know what I'm saying? Some people got big, big, everybody handles everything differently, you know? And so a lot of people will spend their whole lives avoiding the boulder, acting like it's not there, you know, but the universe will continue to send you triggers until you decide to pick up that shovel and go through it. Unless uh, other than that, you're not going to be living your life till its full fullest capacity. Um, so, yeah. So you see the shovel, you decide to pick it up. That is great. Picking up the shovel is step one. And so you start, you don't know how deep this tunnel is. You don't know how deep this boulder is but you but you just start digging and, and and as you dig you know what I mean you start to uncover stuff you start to discover stuff stuff that your brain might have hid from you or you know perspectives that you couldn't see before but now you got these glasses on it and, and now you see you know and, and you start to uncover all of these different things start looking at things for what it is not what it could be um you started seeing people for who they are and not who you want them to be and this shit here gets spooky. This is scary. You're in the dark. We are not in Kansas no more. We are in uncharted territory. I don't know what I'm going to find. I don't know what I'm going to see. I don't know what I'm going to come across. I don't know what I'm digging up, but I just know I got to keep digging until I get to the other side. There is a part of you that exists on the other side, and that is where it's like a magnet, right? Because you are blind. You don't know if you're going the right way. You don't know what you are. So There's no, the, uh, the only compass you have is inside of you. So there's this blind faith that you have to depend on. There's no map to get through this stuff. There is no gauge on, you know, how deep or, or, or how far it goes. There is just this other version on the other side that just is, is pulling you like a magnet towards this. And that is what keeps you going. Because damn, now my shoulder tired. Not only am I scared, it's cold as hell in here. It's dark. I feel lonely. I'm, I'm in an unfamiliar place, but my shoulder. I'm tired of doing this work. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of figuring myself out. You know, I'm tired of this. But but when you look back, okay, when you look back, the only reason why you should look back is to see how far you've come. Don't ever look back to turn around. That's where a lot of people. That's where a lot of people end up. They're like, man, this is a lot of work. I'm gonna just turn around. I'm just go back. 
this shit too hard. I don't got time for this. I miss being back in my familiar environment. I'm just going to turn around and I'm going to go back and I'm going to just vibe out right there. <laughs> Psych you like a Libra. <laughs> you're not going to vibe for much longer before the universe sends you another trigger. And you're going to have to go back the same way you went in. <laughs> so doing double the work just to, to give up and to, and to like quick saying, the more you try to wiggle yourself out of it, the deeper you're going to sink, baby. The only way out is in, period. So while you're digging yourself through this tunnel, you got your magical handy dandy shovel that you didn't even realize was there but it's been there this whole time and you digging and you digging and uh, the best thing to do while you're going through this process is just to have faith in yourself think about instead of being scared of the version that you're going to be you got to be like excited like who is on the other side what is on that other side and whatever you do never give up on yourself because nobody's gonna love you heal you nurture you better than you can and we can sit here and talk about self-love all day long. So I'm not even going to get on that. But this right here, the shadow period of your life is a real true test of faith, perseverance, trusting yourself, trusting God, trusting the universe. This is really where the tests come in, right? And the way you pass these tests with flying colors is you begin to, once you discover everything and you laid everything out on the table and you like, wow this is really what it is. I didn't know this was here. I didn't know that was there. I, I just didn't know these things, you know, but now I know them. So now what am I going to do with that information? You remain in that, in that position of power and you use those things to, instead of destroying you, you use them to make you better. How so? You appreciate these things. You show gratitude for even having these things take place in your life because if had it not taken place you wouldn't be where you are today you wouldn't be who you are today and I don't know about y'all but baby I love me some me okay and so yeah you start to pick up the pieces and you just look at things in this different mindset where you know you take all of the power back in that situation and you learn from it and you grow from it and you hold tight because you almost at the end of this tunnel. You just don't know it. But but things start to things start to 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 lift as you release them. And now you digging and you not shoveling up them big old medium sized boulders. You know what I'm saying? Now you might be shoveling pebbles. You know what I'm saying? Little rocks. And and it's becoming easier because as you release these things, they're not holding you back anymore. They're not dragging you down no more. You are releasing yourself and allowing yourself to ascend go further grow instead of being constricted by these things you understand what i'm saying you take one last shovel and you see the light you're at the end you like wow you know you could choose to be afraid of who out there who am i gonna be what is this gonna look like but no that's you lean into it you know who am I going to be? Who, what, what do I look like? What, who is out there? How do I feel? You know, it, it, it gonna, it's going to feel better anyway, because now you're back shining your light. You put that shit behind you. You are not, you are no longer attached to it. It is no longer a part of you. It does no longer define you. It is not a part of who you are at all. And you move on and, and, and you're free from it. But you have to be the one to, like, release yourself from it. Nobody else is going to release you. Nobody else is going to do the work for you. Nobody is coming to save you. You have to do that work. But I guarantee you, when you do that work, you come out stronger. You come out more powerful. You come out more wiser. You come out more knowledgeable. You come out better than you ever been before. Because you cut that dead weight off. You clip that attachment. And now you can elevate, right? next step right it's like steps like literally ascension is like steps it's a ladder you know you can't just get to the top you literally have to go step by step right and so now you're on to the next step you come out your light is shining bright again you know and and and, and you feel good you 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 and uh, the you meet the other version of yourself that was on the other side that you felt you could feel her you could feel that other version of you like pulling you you know and you meet that version of yourself and you're like wow you know and you start getting acclimated everything is new 
yes, it's it's unfamiliar, it's growth, so it could be a little uncomfortable, but it's newness. It's, it's something about having a blank slate. It's something about rewriting your story and in, in, in the way that you want it, you know, in the way that you want it is the way that it should be because there is a version of you that exists that is already living, feeling, and being the person that you want to be today. Does that, y'all feel me? Yes, sir. This shit gets deep, baby. Okay. It gets deeper than this. Trust me. But I wanted to try to explain this to you the way I felt about it, the way I seen it, because I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people are afraid of shadow work and they're afraid of growing and they're afraid of, you know, uncovering things because they don't know how they are going to be able to handle it. And to be honest with you, everybody's not resilient. So everybody can't handle it. And this is how, you know, people start to self-medicate and get into things that really aren't healthy for them trying to escape it. There's no escaping this shit, bro. And the quicker that you realize that there's no escaping it, and the quicker you start to take this stuff on the chin, the easier and the less resistance it will be. You can fight it all you want, but I promise you, you'll be back. You'll be back and you will be learning the same lesson because your purpose, especially if you are light, you came on this earth to shine that light. And if you are not digging through these boulders and passing these tests, baby, you interrupting the process. You're interrupting the process. You're not doing what you're what you came here to do, what what God put you on this earth to do. You never know how much your story can um, affect somebody or your light can shine on somebody. Like you never know. I mean, anything from just simply telling somebody to have a blessed day or smiling at somebody like you just never know. And that's why you always shine your light and you never allow nobody to steal that from you because it's yours. It's not theirs. You don't know what stage of darkness they are in, but you don't, you don't be like the world. You, you be like you, you be like God, you shine that light regardless. The older I get, the more graciously I start to learn these lessons. And I'm going to tell you why you just supposed to enjoy the moment because you never know what path you are on. Sometimes an accelerated path, you never know when the next boulder is going to show up, how big it's going to be. So all you can do is start vibing again, live your life, enjoy yourself, not survive, not maintain, not exist. Actually live your life, fill out this version of yourself, see what you can do, do your best, go 100%, you know what I'm saying? 101%, give it all you got because you are literally all you got, you know? Who else gonna do it? You take this new version of yourself and you polish it up, you love it, you take care of it, you nurture it. Better than you ever have before because you didn't came out better than you have before. So you take care of this, this version of you, you know, because she probably won't last for long, <laughs> especially if you found this video. Like you are probably on an accelerated path. I always felt like I was on a very accelerated path. And at first I, I didn't know how to feel about it. I'm just like, I didn't know how to feel about it because I'm, I, I, I wasn't doing these things these things were just kind of happening and being like done for me and I'm just kind of going through the motions and, and, and just figuring things out and I kind of feel like everything was on autopilot you know and it was just happening until I caught consciousness and I became very spiritual and I started to see the patterns and 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 I started to see the path that I was on and so now like I said I take these I take these triggers and things as a way. I just know that whenever I'm triggered, whenever there's a tower moment, whenever I feel a shift in the energy, I know that there is going to be a shift in my life. And I don't know what God got planned for me. You know what I mean? So I'm excited. You know, it, doing the work is hard. Doing the work is is scary and, you know, all of that stuff. But like I said, everything that you want is on the other side of fear. So don't be afraid. The only thing you should be afraid of is stagnant energy. And being the same person that you were yesterday. That's the only thing you should be afraid of. And being committed to growth does not mean you have to get up every day. It just means you have to show up every day for yourself. I'm talking about this stuff happens mentally. When people think about polishing themselves and, you know, uh, being the best version of themselves, they think about all of this like physical work that you have to do. But really, it starts in your mind first and then the physical just follows afterwards. 
So, yeah, you could set an alarm and you can wake up at 5 a.m. And, and, you know, oh, I'm a 5 a.m. gym girly now. But if there's no intention set behind it as to why you're a 5 a.m. gym girly, it's going to be short-lived. Because, yeah, it look good, but do it feel good? Are you a 5 a.m. gym girly because you want other people to see that you're a 5 a.m. gym girly and you want it to look a certain kind of way? Or are you a 5 a.m. gym girly because it feel good to you and you have deep-rooted intentions set behind being a 5 a.m. gym girly? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you come out this tunnel, you start, you know what I'm saying, taking them seeds, spreading around, watering them, nurturing yourself, you know what I'm saying, Be get some roots. It has to be deep-rooted. If it's not rooted, it's going to fly away. And always make sure you're rooting the things that you want for yourself in you because only you know what's best for you. So don't root these things in other people because people, I ain't going to lie, don't do that for me. You know what I'm saying? I hope you don't do that for me because don't expect me to do that for you, baby. I'm rooted right here. I'm rooted in me because me is all I got. And that's the only person I can really depend on. You can't really expect people to do other things and, and things like that. That's how you start getting disappointed. Root everything back in you. You let your own spirit be your own God and you stay rooted within yourself. You nurture your own self and you water your own garden. And also make sure you're worried about your own garden. Because while you over there worried about other people and trying to see what they growing, see what they got going on, looking at their garden flourishing, baby, yours is yours is going through it. You're you're neglecting it. There's weeds, you got bugs, aphids and shit, all eating up your leaves and shit. You you worry about the wrong stuff. You tend to your own garden. And while you being grateful and you showing gratitude and you thankful and you appreciate you taking the time, you slowing down, you appreciating this new life, this new leaves, you appreciating these roots. You've been, you've been gracious, you've been showing gratitude, you ain't been complaining about this new life I gave you, you know, things like that. I I, I really want to touch on that real quick because, you know, I, I pay a lot of money in rent, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got two people, three people bills, you know what I'm saying? I'm just one person. But a lot of people, when they hear, if I tell them or share that with them, like how much money I pay to maintain my lifestyle or have the lifestyle that I like to live, they go, man, I should be grateful, you know, or something like that. And I say, I am grateful. I, I wouldn't ask for this and then complain about it. You know what I'm saying? And how is God supposed to give me more if I don't appreciate it and I'm complaining about what I already got? So I just always show gratitude wherever I can, including the triggers and the people that were sent to trigger me, especially because. That it's not of their it's not their fault that the universe decided to use you to to uh, brush the surface and, 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 and reveal what was really underneath like you should be grateful for that and also give like give love like people are struggling like like I said some of these some of these things that people are fighting with you just you have no choice if you knew what they were going through which they probably never going to tell you you would send them so much love even the people that might have did like the foulest shit to you right you never know what people been through or how that affected them just send them love like literally like they don't need no more hate, especially because they already conflicted with themselves. Just send them love. And sometimes that's not always easy. It's not always easy. I mean, you're, I, I got a baby daddy too. You know? There's a lot of things I want to send that's not love. I can't even say on the internet what I be wanting to send sometimes. There's no tea, no shade, but you can't just be walking around expecting people to show up for you when they can't even show up for themselves. So we all know how that feels. So a lot of these people are just kind of miserable, you know, and so misery loves company. And, you know, that's at this lower vibration and you just choose to vibrate higher. When you vibrate higher, you receive more. You're open to to learn more. Um, you begin to love to create space, expansion, like everything about you is expansion. Expanding. You're just constantly just growing out of how you were programmed to be, who you were programmed to be, how you were programmed to talk, how you were programmed to walk, how you were programmed to think, feel, all of that. Just constantly growing out of these outdated old versions of yourself that are not productive to who you really are or the person that you're becoming. So you being diligent, you watering your garden and then God comes along and he like, I got a bigger pot for you. What you going to do? It actually, he don't even ask what you're going to do. You know, sometimes he do give you the option, but like if you resist it, like if you resist that growth, <laughs> it is so funny because whenever God wants you to go to the next level 
and and you don't start clipping weeds and cutting off people and stuff like that and, and doing what you got to do to release yourself from this new reality and start digging that hole, baby, I'm going to tell you what he going to do, right? It's like a hangnail. You know, you got a hangnail and, and, and you be messing with it and you be flicking with it and, and you like, man, I'm going to just keep trying to bite this thing off. I'm nibbling on it. I'm trying to bite it off. It's not, I'm like, okay, I could go get some fingernail clippers and I could clip this off, right? And that's going to be a lot less painless. I'm in control of that. I can clip this hangnail. I see that it's here, you know, but if I just leave this hangnail here and, and God God decided it's time for that hangnail to go and he rips it off. Baby, he's taking the whole cuticle with it. Your finger gonna be toe up. And now not only is the hangnail gone, but it's so it caused so much trauma. <laughs> and it is it is now you gotta wear a band-aid versus girl, you could have just clipped that off right when you saw that hangnail, right when you see that dead weight, right when you see that instead of finicking filicking with it and, and biting it and, and playing with it and all that other stuff girl you know that hangnail ain't got no place in your life and you know it's got to go so just go ahead and clip it and the sooner that we accept that stuff graciously the sooner we can move on to the next step okay because you're gonna go you're gonna go to where god wants you to go it's just how much you decide to fight with it right but that's really all shadow work is it's just life it's just this constant state of death and rebirth and and, and being reborn again and and not allowing your past to define who you are um but it's work it literally is work and it's not hard work it's not easy work it's just internal work and so all of that is literally deciding on how soon and how much you decide to surrender to it and stop fighting it and stop trying to avoid it. So when guys say, all right, new pot, you take your roots and you dig them up and you put them on your back and your hacky sack and you and you go through that tunnel again. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, man, the quicker I start this, the quicker I can get out and I can go back to vibing. You feel what I'm saying? And then eventually you kind of get used to the rhythm, right? And you start vibing with the shadow too. You know what I'm saying? You make friends with the with the darkness. You know, you 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 start to love that also. It's not so much, you know, you start to appreciate that too. You know, because in order for you to appreciate the high moments in the light, you gotta you gotta appreciate the low moments in the dark too. You know what I'm saying? So, but you'll get there eventually. But girl, that's all shadow work is. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um there is nothing and really honestly it's self-guided like it's you don't need a journal okay I'm sorry like a book to like guide you into these things um I promote self-preservation I promote um you know like letting your own spirit be your guide because I feel like a lot of this spiritual stuff can get kind of gimmicky real fast which is real like corny to me so like you know this is a way of life for me this is not nothing that I sell this is not no way that I am to uh, uh you know to appease nobody like y'all see this shit happen in real time y'all see me going through this stuff real time and I'm just very transparent about it because that's what God want me to do and like I said I just I just up here I'm just doing what he want me to do <laughs> I ain't really got no choice does it give sacrificial lamb sometimes yes but do I have an undeniable gift also yes and I'm very grateful for that gift of being able to come up here and share just my point of view and my wisdom with y'all because um it makes me feel good like, this is when I feel like I'm doing my best work. When I'm up here, it's just me and this computer and this camera and this microphone. This is when I feel like I'm doing my best work. So I know I'm where I'm supposed to be because this feels good, you know? And I want to thank you for being 28 minutes deep into this video and you still here. You still rocking with me too. You still vibing. And um, I also just want to say that I am so proud of you for even click it on this video to see what it was about to see you know that's the first step to like starting to figure yourself out and and deciding that you want to rewrite who you are and you know deciding that your past doesn't define you and you know just even leaning into spirituality because it's courageous you taking your power back you picked up that pen and you rewriting your story you doing stuff that people go their whole life without doing you know, but you know that this is the path that feels best to you. You feel drawn to this path, this, you know, this lifestyle, this way of thinking, this way of living for a reason. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that you're here and I'm really happy that you found this video. I hope you took something from it. I hope it resonated with you. Um, I hope this video made you feel good. I hope it made you feel empowered. Like you can absolutely 
do anything every anything that you've came across has not broken you yet bitch you're strong you're resilient you are powerful and you can do this and, you, and even though sometimes you feel alone you not alone okay it, it, look at everybody in the comments everybody going through the same shit baby you are not alone and I didn't even talk about the makeup. Honestly, I just feel like ain't nobody worry about the makeup. Because ain't, no, ain't nobody, how, how could you worry about the makeup when we talking about, we talking about this, the subject at matter? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody worry about the makeup. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.